Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Faith Family Fulfillment. I'm your co-host, Chris. And I'm Suzanne. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're just going to unpack an event that we, or I participated in, and you pit crewed. I did. So not just me, lots of people. So yeah. Kind of unpack some takeaways from that today. And um, I think there's a lot to be taken. A lot to be taken away. I'll pray soon. All right. Lord, thank you for this time where we get to sit um, together and um, reminisce a little and reminisce about how a tribe of like-minded people um, came together around vision and leaned on one another, supported one another, prayed together, and um, just showed up really, really well. And, um, and how many takeaways that we got from that. But as always, keeping you at the center of everything. Um, as you lead and guide this conversation, keep us in your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So do you want to talk about your feet first, or do you want to talk about <laughs> something else? <laughs> like, so a couple of weeks ago, first. A couple of weeks okay. ago, um, a coaching program that I'm a part of, um, our year in Masogi collectively um, was gathering together, in other words, gathering together mm-hmm. to do something really, really hard that more than likely there is a massive chance you're going to fail. But test yourself, test your limits, um, see how much you've grown over the year. And we collectively decided to do a 100-mile trail race in Texas, mm-hmm. the Brazos Bend. Four, five days before the race, they postponed it another five weeks. Mm-hmm. And collectively, the group said, no. Yeah, I was like, no, thank you. Yeah, we're tired <laughs> of training. Um, training's intense for this type of an event. And... But there was 70 people committed to running this thing together. And so we had to kind of back up and pivot. We got a couple of us got on a call um, with some people that were in the group. And we just said, hey, why don't we just readjust and do it locally and still come together collectively? And let's see what happens. So we kind of communicated that message and ended up, rather than running a 16 and a half mile loop in a trail, ran a one mile loop on concrete around a church. Much different on your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, But the amazing thing about it, that the vision of that, Steve Weather put it together Mm -hmm. through the Freedom Council, and to see how many people had committed to doing that and really bought into the vision of what that would look like to collectively come together and do something hard. And they rallied. So we had... I think the majority of people who had signed up for Brazos showed up in Frisco, which is five hours north of their original event place because it was an hour south of Houston, and Houston's four hours north, I mean four hours south of Frisco. So it's really five hours away from where the original event was supposed to be held. It's a big difference, Mm. and the terrain was massively different. But all these people collectively came together. We showed up at at that church like – Steve did a good job of communicating the message, like letting everybody know. We talked about it. Hey, this is what we're going to do. We got to back up and punt. Um, but we gathered together at that church on that Saturday. Everybody was self-sustained. Like you had to bring all of your own gear, all of your own food, all of your own fuel. Like everything had to be yours. Um, but we gathered that church on Sunday morning to start running at seven, and we were going to run it for thirty hours. Saturday, just Saturday, Saturday morning. Going to run it for 30 hours, which would put it ending at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And it was amazing. So their men's group meets at that church on Saturday, on Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. So they were there to kind of cheer us on. And 30 of those guys decided just to run. Um, so the event was called Run Your Race. Um, and it, it was neat to see everybody rally. Because they bought into this vision of it, and everybody, not only did they bring enough to sustain themselves, but there were people that set up and brought a truckload of coconuts for coconut water. And mm. like, Alex Hill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we had all these like wives and family mm. members that rallied around whoever they had that was participating, which led to like a plethora of aid stations. Mm. And... um and the neat thing about it is rather than running single around 
a track for 16 miles. You ended up running a mile loop collectively because, you know, you're just a little bit faster or a little bit slower than most everybody in that group. And so you kind of never ran alone. That's valid. You know? Yeah. Because, I mean, you were, you were there kind of where the start-finish line was. And, mm-hmm. um, you got to see us all kind of amble by <laughs> for several yeah. hours. Yeah. Some more ambulatory than others. Yeah. And um, being able to run together, encourage one another, um, as a tribe, it was amazing. And the end result of it, 20 of the participants did 100 miles. Um, But every single person that started that day accomplished one or both of two things, either the furthest they'd ever been or the fastest they'd ever been that far. So there were people that had done 50 miles before, but they ran 50 miles faster. Mm-hmm. There's people that had done 100K, 62 miles before, but they did it faster. Mm-hmm. And there's people that had never run any. Jeff Jensen. I, t- I mean, I'm so proud of that guy. <laughs> but to watch him train over the past four months for that deal, to go from couch to 100 miles. like He's never run any type of race before. But out there, with the encouragement of people around him, ran 100 miles. Mm. And just goes to show, number one, the power of vision that's communicated and the power of a tribe of like-minded people. For sure. Um, But just lots and lots of takeaways, I think. Okay. So if you had to put one at the kind of top of the list... And your takeaways, what would that be? Oh, my goodness. I think the thing I've talked about the most is the communication of a vision. Mm. Okay. So, elaborate. Um, being responsible mm-hmm. or somewhat, I'd say the most heavily responsible person for the vision in the organization and how it plays out. And you and you hear, when you talk about these long-term visions, mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about 10 years and 20 years. and Generational things. Generational things, generational legacy. Mm-hmm. But to see something in a short term mm-hmm. communicated really, really well for months on end, how when you, when you do such a good job of communicating it, and I've told Steve this, man, the way you communicate the message of the reason why we're doing this Gave something to people for people to buy into to to want to to want to link up with, mm-hmm. um, because if he hadn't been doing that for months, like who's going to move five? Who's going to move and go to somewhere five hours away? That like I mean, it just doesn't. It wouldn't make. It didn't make sense as it was, but it made sense because of the vision. Like of, of this. So hey, you this say is what we're going to do. Vision or just cultivated relationship? Yes, yes. Because I think when there is a commonality of vision or a vision that people can buy into, it becomes relational. When you think about it in our business, like they hear me speak about the things I want to grow this to, the, the, the things that are a little bit different than normal car business or whatever. Um, and the ones that understand it and want to participate in that grow relationship because they're, they want to be near you as you communicate vision to understand and find out, where in that vision can I can I jump on? Because I am, I want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. Like I want to see that come to fruition, and because I want to be a part of it and want to and want to pour into it, then I've got to get closer in relationships so I can understand. Hey, what role can I play? Where can I serve? Mm-hmm. So I think it's it is relationship, um, but I think the relationship grows and gets stronger. The bond gets stronger as the communication of the vision gets clearer and clearer. I would agree with that. So what you say are the other takeaways that were most prominent for you? So first is vision, like the communication of vision, the importance of communication of vision. Second would be the importance of tribe, the importance of, um, yeah, tribe is the word I'd use. I mean, we talked about it when we unpacked 2929, mm-hmm. about how that tribe on that mountain is so different. than It's just different. Like we've been, oh, absolutely. And you know, we talked about how different it was than the bodybuilding space or the 
physique competition oh, space. <laughs> like it's, you know, it's just there in that atmosphere. Everyone is encouraging to everyone that's out there. Yeah, everyone there, I would say, is is looking to serve somebody else. Yes. In, in some way, shape, or form. And, and that's what I saw that day. Um, you know, and, and I know Steve and Jesse are close, you know. Um, I, I think I told Steve this. Jesse would have been proud of what you created this weekend. But that's not who he was trying to impress. No, but, but agreed. But, it, but yes. because Jesse's so about mm-hmm. putting on an event that creates an atmosphere of community and tribe, mm-hmm. like that's exactly what happened. Right. And spur the moment, almost. Um, but yeah, everybody, as they made their way around that one mile loop, was looking for an opportunity to serve and encourage and um, witness and pray and like all those things. I mean, we watched Frank and Guy. I, like I've talked about um, Guy Jones and Frank Ortega. I want to call them out by name because every time they would come by somebody, they they would or somebody would catch them. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, they were they were running at a good clip, but there were people out there running at a really good clip. Right. And if they caught someone, they would stop, have some well, not stop, but slow their pace, have some conversation, and say, "What can I pray for?" And then they would pray with these people as they were running along. And if somebody caught them, they would do the exact same thing. Right. I mean, you you walked some laps with me as I was struggling on my my, my <laughs> later laps, but you heard them yourself. And it was just so encouraging. And I told them, I said, man, you have no idea how much it's blessed my heart to hear you and see you pray over these people so wholeheartedly and openly and proudly, you know. Um, So, yeah, second most important thing is the importance of tribe, like-minded, like-minded side of people. Mm. What else? Um, Planning. (laughs) So... We, you know, Steve and Laura were kind enough to let us borrow Ra Ra's room. Mm-hmm. I don't think I think eventually Ra Ra's going to not like me because every time I show up, they let me borrow her space, and um, she's so kind in giving me that space. Yeah, she is incredibly generous. She is. Um, but when I was packing my essentials or my provisions, yes. Um, I guess maybe I was a little bit in a hurry. I don't know why but I left four pair of socks in my main suitcase that yes, I didn't, did. bring, didn't bring to the track. Yeah. And um, so that, I believe that was one of the biggest detriments of, of the event for me was not having another pair of my socks mm. to shift into. Because I, I went from mile 40 texting my sister about how great I felt, energy level wise. I mean, I, like I just, I had no doubt I'd finish. Like mm-hmm. there was, like I knew it was going to be a long rest of the way, mm-hmm. but I had no doubt that I would finish. And until you had doubts, so you have fishing. <laughs> and then seven miles, <laughs> seven miles later, I'm sitting there, and my wheels are falling off. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so yeah, <clears throat> provision, making sure that packing list don't get overlooked. Double check, double check, double check. Um, that was a detriment to me. Um, yeah, finding finding purpose would be another one. Okay. Um, and I've shared this story, um, but you know, we went to Thanksgiving and had um, our you know we go to Thanksgiving we go we go we travel for Thanksgiving every year with our whole family. And um, this year, we had a couple of additions. Our oldest two mm-hmm. brought their boyfriends. That was something new for us. Um, but on Thanksgiving Day, Avery has said, "Let's run this turkey trot." Like mm-hmm. I don't know what, I I don't know how to say it any louder. I am not a runner. Yes, but we've people discussed keep, this. People keep asking me to do running things. You're not um, a thoroughbred. I am not a thoroughbred. And but she said, "Let's do this turkey trot together." So um, Thomas and her and I got up that morning and went and did this 5K trail run that was 30 minutes away from where we were staying. And it was beautiful. It was great. I I really did enjoy that run. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't about to die. I'd done so much training. It wasn't hard. 
but it was still running, which I don't thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> but I came back from that, and we were talking about it at lunch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Stephanie made a comment, my sister made a comment, and she was, she was born with spinal bifida, so the, and she's, um, like, as far as that particular disorder, that, that disorder, I guess, goes, she is ridiculously blessed mm-hmm. in, in how she's been able to manage her life. There's been multiple struggles in her life, but like she has got the grit to have dealt with them amazingly well, yeah. inspirationally well. And um, but it's hard for her. Like running is not an option. Right. Um, she, she like she walks for exercise, and um, but running's just not on the table. And she said to me, or well, not really to me. I think she was just talking to the table because we were all talking about running, right? Because Thomas is doing that hundred mile event this weekend, and Stephanie. I mean. Avery's done a half marathon and a marathon this year. And so we're just kind of discussing running. And she said, you know, I think if I could, that would be my sport. And she was talking about the freedom to be out among God's God's creation Mm -hmm. alone, just enjoying it Mm -hmm. in her own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I, in the moment when she said it, like I stopped my complaining. Like I was like, I am just going to shut the heck up. Because I'm a jackass. Here I am complaining about something that I have the ability to do, taking for granted the difficulty of it. Like right. rather than rather than like just I, I need to be excited about the difficulty mm-hmm. rather than complaining about it mm-hmm. because I have the ability. So not a have to, but a get to. Right. Just super checked me. Wasn't her intention. I know that wasn't her intention, but it definitely checked me. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I had been running, that conversation kept, I was like, it was on loop in my head. I didn't wear, I didn't wear my headphones. Mm-hmm. I never listened to anything. I had conversations the whole time. So that conversation in my head when I was by myself was all about that table conversation. And I, and I sent a message to her just talking about how much it had meant that she had said it to me. And and then saying, and that's going to get me to a hundred, right? <laughs> and then, and then, and then feeling and hearing and watching my wheels fall off six miles later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think having purpose mm-hmm. behind the behind the hard mm-hmm. matters. I think that would be a big takeaway for me. Um, not just you know, I, I don't think I ever do anything hard to just to do something hard. Think that I'm that way, but I think there's always a purpose behind the hard. Okay, I think I just got. Maybe that one was different than what I thought it would be going in. That's fair. So, what would you say is something that you saw, experienced, thought that kind of caught you off guard, or maybe not caught you off guard, but you were pleasantly surprised? Maybe is a better way to preface um, it. Man, that's a really good question. Um, Because there's so many things. I I think watching, you know, we we talked about the importance of tribe and how being there to encourage matters. I think one of the more surprising things for me, especially with that tribe, because there's a lot of alpha men Mm -hmm. in that group. Right, not in a negative way, but there's there's some leaders in that group, and I think people oftentimes think that leaders are not are the ones that won't ask for help; they're just going to figure it out. Mm. And there are multiple guys that I know are successful in their business and are natural leaders, and maybe that's the difference of being around a natural, real leader versus a imposter leader. But how quickly they asked for. Like they were willing to go, hey, I'm struggling with this. Like, I need help. Like, who can right. help me? Right. And then to see people step up. I mean, people would come in, and if you were near, they go, hey, Dr. Seuss, I need help with this. Like, they would lean right. to you and go, hey, what do you think? Mm-hmm. You know? Because they had this, they wanted to complete the mission that they came for. Right. And, and the mission was more important than their own ego 
mm-hmm. in that moment. Like I can set aside the fact that I should be able to complete this and say, hey, in order for me to complete this, I'm going to need somebody else's help. And there's somebody else that has a skill set that I can use and borrow and glean from. And because of that, then I'm going to lean into that. So I would, let me, let me flip that on you. Okay. So you said, you know, leaders who would naturally or would typically power through on their own. I would argue that a true leader understands the benefit of, yeah, I'm kind of lost right now. Hey, you, I think you can help me. And being able to resource what's available. I would say a leader is, a true leader understands that. And someone who's still wrapped up in their in themselves would be the one who's been like, no, I'm going to power through. I might break myself in the process, but now I'm going to power through because I don't need anybody else. I think a true leader understands, no, I need people. Because clearly I have a skill set and my skill set does not encompass everything that I'm going to encounter. Yeah, and, and, and you're 100% right. And, and that's what I'm trying to articulate is I think being in that space, the real ones showed up as real ones. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, which was beautiful to see and encouraging to see. Um, because there are people that I see that I'll be doing life with. Um, in some type of capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll say another thing, you, when you said power through, and this is not, I don't want, Phyllis, if you hear this, I'm not talking negatively about you. No, we love you. We love <laughs> you. And but, and, and not because she was the power through, because she did power through, mm-hmm. but she was a, mul- a major encourager of everyone on that Absolutely. track. Every time, every time she came by me, her, Phyllis Blanchard, she... <laughs> She was the first person to finish. And I will say that, um, Phyllis, if you are listening, you humbled a lot of people um, (laughs) by your absolute perseverance. And I think that is something that should be noted. Absolutely. Um, I think she finished in 17 hours. 19. 19 hours. 19 and some change. So 100 miles in 19 hours. She was the first one finished. Um, I I wish I could have counted how many times she lapped me. Um, it was more than a dozen. It was definitely more than a dozen. <laughs> but every time she came by, she was smiling mm-hmm. and encouraging, and you know. Mm-hmm. And then she talked about, I mean, she took in five hundred calories over over a hundred miles. And she said afterwards, like it was so much about mindset, mm-hmm. because within about what she say, a minute, minute and a half I don't remember. of her crossing the hundred miles, like she was completely immobile mm-hmm. like but it carried her through you know mm-hmm. um so the power of mind would be another takeaway because she she did and it wasn't like she wasn't asking for help but she just was in a dad burn zone oh yes very much the whole time yes um and 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 by being that way was a big encourager mm-hmm. a big humbler <laughs> but I, I would say as much as she did humble people, I think her ability to encourage overrode mm. the fact that people recognize that they were getting beat by a lady. Well, and when I say <laughs> humble, I don't mean, not, you know, mean to, no, I don't mean it like that at all. I just mean that, you know, when you can show up well, perform well, but perform well with that kind of spirit and attitude, hands down, like it's... It's very humbling because you look at that and you're like, okay, well, that sets the bar high. And I need to measure myself by that. She definitely set it high. I mean, not just in her physical ability, but the way she showed up. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of how people showed up, so Pierce, um, (laughs) Pierce, he, number one, youngest person ever Mm -hmm. to complete the triple crown of 200 mile races this year. So he's set the bar really high. And he did an ultra man in March. So an absolute physical specimen of an athlete Mm -hmm. was sick, Mm -hmm. still did 50 miles. Um, but at the moment of my wheels falling off, played Jesus, you and I'll give you credit too, but the two of you washed my feet and y'all like you, we're not going to put pictures of my feet up. YouTube or anything, but no, we're not because they it, were bad. That was bad. <laughs> um, 
because they had started to blister, which I'd never had to deal with before. But when I sat down and started having those feet issues and we were trying to doctor them just so I could keep going, you know, because I really, at, at, at mile 47, I thought, you know, I can do another, I think I can do another 14 miles. I can get to six or 15 miles. I can get to 62. I can get to 62. That's 100K and I'll feel good. Um, Just get me patched up, you know, patch me up and put me out, you know. But he sat down and gingerly, gently, you know, having been through a situation where he's had to deal with bad feet before, like truly servant-hearted washed my feet. Just a beautiful moment. Not a way I would want to have spent my 23rd birthday. It was his birthday. Mm. You know, we celebrated him that morning with his yes. ring of honor. Um, and he was, you know, 12, 14 hours later, he's sitting on the ground, not running anymore, which I know was disappointing to him, um, and washing this old dude's feet. And they were... <laughs> hideous you know well they're not the best on a good day but these were <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> but but they were bad they were blistered up something horrible um but but i mean the way he showed up was mm-hmm. amazing you know he was doing laps of people encouraging one another i mean and, and you know steve's the one that kind of organized it all and even when we had to shift and move and pivot and he was the same way he was coming by everybody, encouraging. Like it's just the the human spirit, which which the way it showed up there mm. was not what the mass media news wants us to think it is. Mm. You know, yeah. I mean, it was just it was beautiful. It was beautiful to watch. Mm. Never underestimate the power of a hot French fry. I'll say that too. That's, <laughs> that's a ticket. That's it's a plant. It's man. <laughs> I um, like man. Those like I'm. I'm not a person who's going to gorge on some McDonald's French fries, but they sure were good about mile thirty five. You know. So I mean, lots just lots of takeaways. Lots of takeaways. How would you um, if someone's thinking about undertaking? Because that was that is what it would be the undertaking, the challenge to do something incredibly hard. I mean, we've talked about 29 of 29. We're, we're going to, um, we're going to revisit that and, and I'm going to speak it into existence, conquer it in 24. Question. Yeah, <laughs> we are. Um, one way or another. Yes. Um, but if you had somebody who were, you were encouraging or speaking into or talking out of perhaps doing something incredibly hard in, in their Misogi what would be your um what would be what would you lead with? What would be the most important thing for them to consider? Find a guide. Find a find someone that can help coach you forward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the the, the beautiful thing about twenty nine twenty nine is they give you the ability to to one connect with one coach. Mm-hmm. But they also have a big coaching community. But they as have well. a coaching community. Exactly. So there's like people that have done it before or whatever, and they're giving you a training program. So mm-hmm. if you I believe if you follow the training program and you Train your whole body. You know, the the issues that you and I had, there's no way to predict those, but there is a way to train around the one that I have. Mm -hmm. I've learned that now. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, having, I mean, Pierce was my go, my Mm go-to, you know, and he was, you know, egging me on Mm -hmm. politely when I would miss training, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But he was the, he was a trainer for a lot. I mean, he was the coach for a lot of the guys that were there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but I mean, you're talking about a, a young man who's done some incredibly hard things and he knows how to speak from a spot of struggle and a spot of success. Right. You know, it's, it's one thing to coach out of theory. It's another thing to coach from experience. A thousand percent. So yeah, pick something that's ridiculously hard, but find someone that can coach you through it, like lead you through it, give you pure feedback. Um, and to, to speak into, in a, an extremely honest way, you want it to be something that's going to be at least a 50, 50 chance that you may not be able to complete it, but going into something that's a 1% chance, like that's different. Like somebody should tell you that's not a good idea. Like it, somebody should speak sure. into that. Or that's not a good idea yet. Right. Yeah. Like let's do that four years from now. Right. What are we going to do to get up to that? Mm-hmm. Um, would be what I would say is 
um, finding finding a good coach in that area. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we talk about the importance of coaching all the time, whether it's business coaching or wellness coaching or lifestyle coaching or um, performance coaching. I mean, having that person that can speak truth into you, right, with permission, mm-hmm. um, leads to a much higher level of success or higher probability of success, I'll say. Right. Final thoughts. Um, so I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion that, that I'm not a good runner. I think someone's told you that. Yeah, time. a lot of yeah. people. But I, but I also do enjoy doing hard things with people. And, you know, our Masogi as a family is 29 or 29. Like, we've kind of chosen that. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to force the younger two into it. Um, we've kind of chosen they'll, they'll go. They'll go willingly when yeah, it's they, time. They will when it's time. <laughs> You're right. They will when it's time. Um. And so I've kind of said, you know, they're, they're doing Run Your Race again next year. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, it's December the 7th. If you're interested, you can DM us on DM me on Instagram, and I can get you connected to the right place to get you signed up. If that's go ahead, put you it on your there. calendar. Yeah, do it. on Do it. Because this time it's going to be a family event, mm-hmm. um, which is really cool. Collectively, how many miles can your family do? Like, that's going to be a really cool event. But um, The Weatherfords have an advantage. They do. They're stacking the deck with eight people. Um, cause he's <laughs> going to put King in a stroller and run with him. Um, hey. so, but like, I've decided that the 29 and 29 is my Masogi. If I get the red hat, I will have completed my Masogi, mm. which means I go in to run your race with a different mindset. It will be collective miles, but it's also going to be how fast can I run a half? And depending on how I feel at the end of a half, how fast can I run a hole? Mm. You know, with not having the hundred mile as my as my it's it's more it's going to be more about speed, mm. because in just a short period of time, I mean, I ran a marathon on the 29th of October, I believe, mm. and to the very end of October, and then the hundred miler took place on the third of December. Mm. So let's say best case scenario, a month and two days. I bested my half marathon by 30 minutes or more, but I bested my marathon time by 47 minutes. And so then it was like, okay, well, how fast could you do this if you weren't focused on the endurance of 100 miles? Mm -hmm. Because it is a different, it's a much different thought process to go in and go, how fast can I get through a half marathon versus I got to be out here for 100 miles. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's, Let's check the speed. Right. Think about lasting. Right. So, um, so yeah, so it's going to shift for me depending on 29 or 29. Okay. And there were quite a number of folks who came out to the event by themselves. Yes. There were quite a number of people. And, again, it was self-sustaining, but we were close by to, you know, accommodation you know, for whatever you might need. So let's say somebody is wanting to do something really hard but doesn't really have – Anyone to pull along with them as their as their support. Given what you saw and how the community rallied around folks and and everybody just became everybody's friend, how could you put their mind at ease as, in terms of um, not really worrying about that so much? Yeah, um, a perfect example. Um, Rick Nappy's, I think it's his cousin. I wish I could remember his name. It's I, I'm, I'm sorry, Rick's. Rick, but he came just to be support and ran 16 miles. He just quit smoking two packs a day a month ago. Um, I remember him. I talked to him quite often as he came through. Yeah, yeah. so using his an, him as an example, not even an athlete per se, mm-hmm. but shows up, and the tribe around him encouraged him to such a point that he got out there and he ran farther than he's ever run in his life. Right. With zero training. Right. It you could I think a complete stranger to in fact there were some people that were complete strangers, but a couple of complete strangers brought someone with them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it would have mattered. Mm-hmm. I think a com I mean, someone who just by chance heard that it was happening go, Man, that's fun, I'll go do that. By the end of it would have made lifelong friends. Mm. I, I, I think it was that that 
good of an atmosphere, that good of an event, that good of that good of people. Mm. Like they just really wanted to see people succeed, right? And were willing to do whatever, however, whenever mm -hmm. to help somebody do their best. Mm -hmm. Which is why I mean, and it's not. I mean, they've I mean, they've interviewed everybody that participated. Everybody did either further or faster than they've ever been. A hundred percent. I can't think of any event that could that could tout that stout, tout that stat. Mm. I think that's a prime example of hey, if you don't have people, you'll find people. Just come see us. Right. You know? So right. it's cool to be a part of that. Very good. Very cool. Anything else? Yeah. We're coming up on the new year. Pick yeah. a pick a masogi. Pick yeah. something hard. Yeah, 29 or 29 sold out, so you yeah. can't do that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but and you can't buy our slot. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to give that up. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Run your race 2024. Do hard things. Do hard things. And like I said, if you're interested in that at all, you can DM me on Instagram. Um, and I can get you hooked up with the rope. I can send you the connection to make it. Pray us out. Absolutely. Cool. Father God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to have experiences in our tribe, in our community, in our family of choice, and be able to do things for others and service to others. Um, even though it might not seem like service to us, because it's just kind of who we are, what we do, um, how we live, but it could be incredibly meaningful to other people. So help keep us mindful of just showing up, um, shining your light, because we never know what the final outcome or impact is that we might have. So especially during this season of the year and as we're moving into the new year, just help keep us focused on that. Uh, we ask these things in your name and in agreement. Amen. Amen.